Yes. Now we can. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, so first of all, I thank uh, AIUS and uh, West Bengal Society for this uh, kind invitation. And uh, uh, there's nothing much left for me actually to talk because uh, uh, because uh, so many speakers have spoken so much about all these things. And uh, first, uh, we have to understand that our knowledge about the disease is changing every day. And depending on the situation, the guidelines will have to be locally adjusted. And what we are discussing today may not be valid in the future. Like this study came in March, which said that almost one third of the patients uh, of COVID, they have got affection in the eye, but it is uh, not agreed upon anymore. General precautions are same, which everybody else has discussed. So I'll not go into details. The few things which I would like to em emphasize is that exposure between two persons, two individuals, whether the patient and doctor and patient to patient, doctor to doctor should not be more than 15 minutes at one particular time. And uh, no direct ophthalmoscopy should be performed. And the problems which are specific to glaucoma uh, is that once a function is lost, it is lost forever. So the treatment of glaucoma is a semi-emergency, if not always an emergency. And we have to understand that all investigations are glaucoma are, are not really mandatory all the time. So our duty is not only to prevent blindness from glaucoma, but we have a responsibility towards the public health as well. So before the actual consultation, uh, as Dr. Arup had shown, video consultation and categorize the patients into high, medium and low risk. And then uh, we have to minimize the frequency of follow-up because all these patients are in lifelong follow-up. And the usual follow-up period is three to six uh, months, and uh, we have to increase to six monthly in the uh, stable cases. And we can always on telephone discuss with the patient that uh, if the IOP can be checked locally in the low risk area in the local uh, eye hospitals or local individual practitioners, and patient need not come to a place like ours hospital, which is a COVID hospital. Uh, so we can uh, discuss rest of the things on telephone. And uh, this is about uh, the uh, keeping the barrier ship and uh, the shield, which everybody has already discussed. And this is required for gonioscopy, GAT, uh, and uh, go the slit lamp examination, as well as for laser procedures. So if a shield is not there, somebody can use the X-ray sheet as well for the same purpose. And uh, now the specific things and about the application tonometry, Goldman application is still the most preferred even in the COVID era. There are disposable covers available if someone can afford. The prism has to be disinfected in the morning and at the end of the day with bleach, and this is 0.1% is the concentration for this. Hydrogen peroxide can also be used. In between the cases, we can use commercially available 70% uh, alcohol wipes. And uh, this is how it is. And, uh, the other tournament, like shorts, uh, a flame can be used and then cooled for a sufficient period of time. That's a very good uh, way to disinfect this. And uh, these are the instruments in which uh, uh, the touching parts are available as disposables. So this uh, can, uh, they are preferred instruments in this era, especially this one, I care for the uh, children. And there has been a controversy about the non-contact uh, tonometer, about the aerosol generation, which was considered uh, important uh, when we made the GSI guidelines and AIS guidelines. But uh, now there is recently, on 16th of June, uh, new guidelines have been you know, uh, declared by Royal College of Ophthalmologists and Optometrists, And they said that measurement of intraocular pressure by air puff tonometry is unlikely to pose a significant risk to the staff or other patients when undertaken in patients without active COVID-related conjunctivitis. So they have proposed that we should restart uh, NCT. And the instrument, these are the extra precautions that they, they have proposed. Instrument head should be wiped with appropriate disinfectant wipe after every use. And we should do three blank puffs in between the patients to clear the uh, tip. About the gonioscopy, Vogue has now introduced uh, single use lenses of all varieties that uh, those for diagnosis as well as for treatment and capsule autoperidotomy and for diagnostic uh, uh, diagnostic gonioscopy. So the lenses that we originally have, they can be cleaned. These are COVID uh, these are guidelines from Vogue in running water and soap solution, which we have always been actually doing, and they can be dried and wiped again with the seventy percent uh, isopropyl alcohol, and uh, 
the soak of the lenses should be for a minimum of uh, 10 minutes for 0.5%. So this is five times that of the prism. Gold band prism is 0.1% and this is 0.5%. The surfaces uh, are 1%. Because it's a highly, highly toxic agent and it's a corrosive, so extra uh, higher concentration should not be used than recommended. And in cases which are COVID positive, we should avoid using 78D or 90D lenses and use indirect ophthalmoscopy instead. And uh, these lenses can be disinfected by uh, glutaral dehyde as well. Uh, as far as the visual fields are concerned, we can defer them because many of them are not really urgent and self-recording systems, they are available, but they will improve and will become the norm in case this COVID stays for many years. Patient and the examiner both should wear the mask and sit at, the examiner should sit two meters away. For this, you may need to change the cables with the longer cables. And uh, the patient should be advised to adjust the chin rest himself and the paper cover of the chin rest should be discarded after every use. The recommendations from Carl Zeiss about the disinfection of the wheel fields is that uh, the outer surface is to be cleaned with 70% isopropyl alcohol and inside the bowl uh, one can only be, it should be wiped with a dry soft uh, cloth and in case there is sneezing or something like that happens, then a, a soft cloth with mild soap can be used. And every other manufacturer can have their own guidelines. And uh, now, the, and the number also has to be reduced because in between the cases, you have to give time. I, we had been doing almost 10 to 12 fields a day. Now we are doing uh, not more than two to three per day. As such, patients are also coming less because patients are coming afraid of coming to a COVID hospital like ours. And uh, as far as imaging uh, or fundus photography is concerned, this is uh, preferable over the visual fields because they are easier to desanitize, uh, easy to sanitize and decontaminate. The infection of all these things, OCT, fundus camera and laser machines, uh, they can be uh, done in the same way and the procedure is the same for all of them. The lenses to be wiped with soft uh, cloth, non-fiber using ethanol or 70% uh, isopropyl alcohol. Shankar uh, Eye Foundation guidelines, uh, they have given the recommendations for OCT and lasers and they have uh, circulated a video which is extremely nice video. I, I had abridged it to 45 seconds but not showing it because uh, of the lack of time. We are already running short of time. As far as ultrasound biomicroscopy is concerned, avoid it as far as possible and if the disinfection is required, uh, one can use uh, UBM cups, they can be sterilized with ETO and uh, to be changed after every patient and the probe can be covered with a cut glove and then after every use, uh, clean with the 70% isopropyl alcohol. For the laser procedure, it is possible to keep the patient of the ACG on pilocarpine in case the, there is a certain area which is really very, very high density zone then you can avoid doing lasers as well and put the patient on pilocarpine and which can avoid the acute attack and in case it's a low risk area you can go ahead with the uh, YAG laser as routine with taking all the precautions and uh, covering the laser uh, you, including the lens you can cover with uh, the easy wrap that we use for the food uh, which is the recommendation of Shankar Eye Foundation. And the same precautions which are to be used for OCT as well. And one should give ample time in between two cases so that in case there is something left over, it takes it gets cleaned up and and gets dried up. For the surgery, I think uh, most of the people uh, earlier surgeons they have discussed it, and uh, it it can be deferred. Uh, but uh, there's hardly anything which is aerosol generating in glaucoma surgery. And whatever is the minimum possible anesthesia, GA should definitely be avoided if possible, and except in children. And in case somebody has, you know, access to laser procedures, and there is always, a, if there is a plus minus case that you either do with incisional surgery or laser, always go in for lasers if possible. And for surgery, hospital protocol has to be followed, as Dr. Ajay Sina said that the director has not given permission because they might be requiring our residents in the COVID area. So there may be many reasons for policies and they have to be respected.
and the prefer we should prefer the surgery that requires less frequent uh, follow up like i have been operating only agvs in these days and not doing traps because traps require far more number of visits and uh, not too much of follow up and uh, post uh, surgical multiple you know interventions may be required for pediatric cases cochlear and goniotomy lenses they can be sterilized with ethylene oxide thus to summarize one should avoid non urgent procedures delay the appointments of the stable patients take care of your own and the patient safety repeated disinfection of all surface and equipment is required but at the same time don't use too much of corrosive agents to cause damage to your expensive equipment and many patient have minor problems and they can be guided on telephone itself and the future i think of the surgery of ophthalmic surgery is going to be robotic examination as well as surgery to be done from a distance so thank you very much uh, for your attention and giving me this opportunity thank you so much